Hey there everyone. You may have heard of H.G. Wells, famous writer of science fiction and science. Now he received many honours in his career, but there was one thing he wanted more than anything else. That was to become a fellow of the Royal Society. And who wouldn't want that? Did it ever happen? No, it didn't. But his friends did try. There was a campaign to have him elected. And that's what we're going to talk about today. In this box here is the evidence. So let's take it out. Let's talk to Keith. Let's find out what it's all about. Okay, so here's the box. I'm here with Keith now, head Hi. librarian, Royal Society. You probably know who he is by now. Keith, before we talk about what's in the box, mm -hmm. let's make the case for H.G. Wells, because mm. he's not a scientist as such. Well, you don't have to be a scientist if you perform services for science. There is a special statute, Statute 12, whereby people can be elected as a, a fellow of the Royal Society. Now, uh, in the 19th century, it was very common for people who had absolutely nothing to do with science to be elected. So a sculptor like Francis Chantry, a painter like Sir Thomas Lawrence, or a literary man like Alfred Tennyson, England's greatest poet of that period, he became a fellow of the Royal Society. I think Wells is the most brilliant candidate that we've had for a Statute 12 election. He, he was very famously uh, trained by Thomas Henry Huxley, a president of the Royal Society, so he did have a scientific background. His early novels, The Time Machine, The Island of Dr. Moreau, The War of the Worlds, they're all based on scientific ideas of the time. So he's a great popularizer of particular things. Just in case you think Keith is making it up, <laughs> we've got some evidence here. You've got a, these, are from, these are from the Royal Society's own collection. What, what books have we got here, Keith? Well, this is The Science of Life. So Wells wrote popular scientific books. And in this case, this is a three volume set on all of biological science, science of life, which he did with Julian Huxley, who was a fellow of the Royal Society, and again, part of the very famous and prolific scientific clan, the Huxleys. So he knows his stuff when it comes to science, mm. and he actually also used sort of fellows of the Royal Society as sort of fictitious heroes in his books, didn't he? He did. The time traveller in that great book is a fellow of the Royal Society. He states it explicitly in the book. And Wells, in his uh, uh, autobiographical writings, his experiment in autobiography, he says specifically, there's only one honour that he really, really wants. He doesn't say what it is, but we all know what it was. It was Fellowship of the Royal Society. Okay. Now, these are letters. Well, this is Sir Henry Dale's correspondence. So Sir Henry Dale is a president of the Royal Society. We have lots of his papers, but this is from the 1940s. This is a letter that has been written on the 16th of December, 1943, to Henry Dale, and it's from... Julian Huxley of the famous Huxleys. I'm writing about something which has been in my mind for some time, and that is whether the Royal Society would not think of electing H.G. Wells as a fellow in view of his general services to the cause of science. I have never spoken to him on the subject, but I am quite sure from knowing him that a distinction of this sort would be one of the few public recognitions which would give him real pleasure. And that really backs up what you said, doesn't exactly it? Exactly right, yes. There's another letter on the same subject. You, you have a go yeah, there. You know, go. you know what I'm like with handwriting, Keith. Okay. So um, he's saying to Dale, you didn't answer my uh, letter of a couple of weeks back. Hurry up, come on, come on. Exactly right, yeah. It's like when I email you about doing more filming. Well, exactly, yeah, yeah it's exactly the same. It would be useful for me to get someone on the Royal Society Council interested in proposing H.G. Wells. So he, he's not going to let this go. He's playing the game too. He wants exactly someone on right. the council to sort of get in there and do it for uh, him. And, and, and he recommends Wells' latest book, which is a tome on the Roman Catholic Church in a Penguin edition for Dale's reading. There's a great deal of brilliant Wellsian history and speculation in this book. So all the things that he's known for. At the end of the day, he didn't get in. Off camera, Keith was having a real rant about it. You're, <laughs> you're not happy. And of course, the people may be thinking at home, 
Let him in now. Like he might be dead, mm. but why don't we elect him now? Yeah. But that's not how it works. No, we the society just doesn't do that. I mean, it has to be someone who's living. You can't do it retrospectively. That would be rather silly, I think. A figure like Wells is a bit of an oddity for the fellows, I think, because he is primarily a literary figure, and it's far harder to judge literary reputations, especially when people are still alive. So they were clearly more comfortable looking at science and scientists and electing people that way. I want to show you one last thing. Downstairs in the archives is a row of books, not just of people who've been elected. There's also books of who the candidates were, the people who didn't get elected. And inside this book are all the candidates, all the people who were discussed as possible fellows, mm. those who were then voted on. You can't open it, Brady. We can't show it to you. We can't because it's confidential. Tell me what's going on here. When can we see this? What are the rules with candidates? The general rule for very confidential material is 80 years. If you think about it, someone who is elected or indeed not elected, if they're proposed in their 20s, might well still be alive. Therefore, this material is quite sensitive and we, we don't allow it out uh, until the correct period has, has gone over. Okay, so... In 2021, in only six years, we can start opening this book. And another thing worth bearing in mind, this is most likely actually the science candidates. This may not even have the Statute 12 candidates it is, in it. It, it shouldn't have. The Statute 12 would have gone directly to council. Yeah. So we probably won't even find out about H.G. Wells when we do get inside this book. Nope. <laughs> I still would love to show you. Hang around. Six years, yeah, we'll open it up for we'll, you. We'll still be making videos in six years, surely. Definitely. Yeah, plenty of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this useful to? It contributes to the history of science from the point of view that this particular episode might be interesting to a scholar. However, uh, to a biographer, this is fascinating. It tells you something about Everest the man. And that in itself is worth knowing. The personalities behind the great stories.